Hello, welcome to April's edition of TBR Spin. Uh, I am posting this at the end of the month because it has been a crazy month for me, but I have chosen my books and I will take you through that choice and I will also review for you my March book, The Tenth Muse by Catherine Chung. So, let's talk about the books that I've picked or the books that I'm choosing between because it's still not quite clear to me yet. This month we had the sort of double choice of Kieran from KD Books, KD Rees, KD Books, <laughs> gave us a prompt because he was the original TBR Tackle master. And um, his prompt was to first of all calculate how many pages you read through the TBR spin challenges so far. So I have done that. So I read 172 pages of How to Be Both, I read 150 pages of Ex Libris, and I read 291 pages from the Tenth Muse. So I didn't even include You Have to Make Your Own Fun Around Here because I added that on at the end because I wanted to read it. Um, and even with those, I managed 613, which was above his 600 page count that we needed. If it was below 600 pages, you had a different prompt. If it's above 600 pages, basically you could choose whatever you wanted from your stack, whatever you most felt like reading. Um, and I have chosen from that Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is the one that I feel the most drawn to reading and it's because we've been doing a lot of war literature at university. And whilst that's not usually my sort of thing, and I would usually steer clear of it, I have been really enjoying learning about it and I have been really enjoying noticing how war literature often contains this element of absurdity and really throwing it in your face how absurd the whole thing is and that's what I understand about Slaughterhouse Five is that it is, I mean it's it's lauded as a postmodern piece of work and that often includes absurdity um, and very black humour. So that's why I've picked this one. Whether I will actually read this one or not, I don't know because then we have the actual TBR uh, spin prompt and that was to pick from your stack an author that you have already read from before and on my stack I have none. None of these books are from authors that I've read before. So I went through my hardback shelves because all of my uh, books for TBR Spin are going to be from my hardback shelves and I have picked out a selection that would fit that prompt. A Small Revolution in Germany by Philip Henscher I've read um, and I can't even remember what it's called. The Emperor Waltz by Philip Henscher, really loved it. Um, so I have a couple of his books, but I have one in hardback, which is this one. I've got Dark Matter, A Ghost Story by Michelle Paver, which is one of the ones that I hauled very recently. I've read uh, The Wolf Brother, which is a middle grade one. I've listened to that on audiobook. It is narrated by Ian McKellen and it's a really wonderful book to listen to, The Wolf Brother, so that's another one. I've then got a non-fiction, we've got Medieval Intrigue, Decoding Royal Conspiracies by Ian Mortimer. I read his A Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval Britain um, and I've got another book, another of his like Time Traveller's Guide books to read as well, but this is the one that I have in hardback, Medieval Intrigue, and I do really enjoy the way he sets out history. So unfortunately those ones I am very certain I won't choose simply because of the ones that I'm about to show you. So this one is also unlikely, although I think it's gonna come pretty soon. I think I'll probably read this this summer, but this is Creature by Sean Tan, um, which is a look at Sean Tan's work and then him talking about how, like the creative process and how he came up with his ideas and what inspires him, uh, which is a wonderful book, but another one that I don't think I'm gonna choose. And the reason I don't think I'm gonna choose those is because these next ones that I'm gonna show you if I read one of these would all tick off one of my 23 to read in 2023, which is why I might prioritise these ones. We've got The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. This is really chunky and I don't think this is the one I'm gonna choose, but this would tick off my 23 for 2023 where I wanted to read something by Margaret Atwood because I've read The Handmaid's Tale. That was one of those pivotal books in my reading life that just really reminded me like, how amazing literature can be, like what a book can do for you. I don't know whether it would still hold up to that if I read it today, it's on my to be reread list, but I really want to read something else by Margaret Atwood and see if her writing in general still gives me that same feeling. But So there's that one, I don't think I'm gonna read that one though. <laughs> then I've got The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This would also tick off works in translation. I've read The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one either. 
Then we've got Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney, uh, because I have read Normal People. That was one of my favourite books from 2022. Uh, so I've got this one. And then the one that I think is most likely, because it's the one that I feel the most in the mood for, is Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith. This is another one where um, I just wanted to read something by Patricia Highsmith this year for my 23 for 2023, and I happen to have one of them in hardback, which is this one. Uh, but this is like a thriller, and I feel like I'm in the mood for a thriller. So I might try and finish both of these, but I'm unsure. It'll be one of these two that I read for April. Um, simply because I've got so much that I need to finish for university that just April is just not looking good for reading but certainly by the time I next update you on TBR Spin it'll be one of these two so so now it's time to review The Tenth Muse by Catherine Chung now if you've watched my quarter one wrap up which I posted last week you'll know that this was one of my favourite books of this quarter so far and it's just it just I find it quite amazing that two of my favourite books of this year so far have been beca read because of TBR Spin uh, like, doesn't that just bring you so much joy to be joining in with these sorts of challenges and these sorts of games that are going on on YouTube that two of my favourite books from the last three months have been because of that? Anyway, so what is The Tenth Muse? So in The Tenth Muse, we follow um, our protagonist, who is called Catherine as well. It is not autofiction. It had just She's just chosen to name her character Catherine as well, who is seemingly, I'm going to say, Asian-American. Uh, living, we when we first encounter her, she is living with um, her mother and her father. Although we very quickly find out that her mother is not her real mother, although is Chinese herself. We learn through the book that her background is a lot more complicated than just saying she's American, uh, Asian American. And there's a lot about herself that she doesn't know. There is a lot of questions around why this woman who has been her mother for her whole life leaves and never contacts her again, all while she's battling the misogyny of the science and technology mathematics industry, because that's where she wants to go, that's where she, that's where her passion is, she, she wants to be a mathematician, and this is all about the Riemann hypothesis and how she wants to solve um, these complex theories of mathematics, and how she's always sort of put down because she's a woman, how men sort of steal her work, like it makes you angry when you see things happening to her and I've seen I've seen people review this book and be like oh I really didn't care for all the misogyny like I really wish this book just didn't have to have that in there it, what like it wouldn't be historical fiction it wouldn't be true to the period that it's writing about if it didn't include that in it because that's the lived experience of women at that time like I just find people who review stuff like that why are you even reading historical fiction if that's how you feel? <laughs> but yeah, this, you don't have to know anything about maths, you don't have to know anything about Chinese folklore or anything like that, but it all gets woven in so well. It reads so quickly. Like, I would, I can't understand why this was not nominated for something like the Women's Prize for Fiction in the year it was published because it just fits so well. If you like books from that prize generally as a general sort of rule you would like this honestly it, it's so good I'm trying to think can I compare it to anything if you like Kate Moss's writing things like Circe by Madeline by Madeline Miller all those sorts of things like these sort of very women's focused historical fiction then I really think you'd love this book yeah so we follow Catherine as she goes through her life unraveling her history and her background and you know while she's also trying to navigate just living in the real world and trying to, you know, have a career in a subject that she's traditionally been excluded from. So yeah, it was brilliant. And I don't feel like I've given it justice with my review, but I loved this. Thanks.